a very cool fact about Fraser this time of year, into September at the moment, is all the whales that are coming up and down the coast. I've got Sean Whale up in front here, and a whole bunch of whales out there. Watch these whales, they're actually breaching right up out of the water out there. Having a whale of a time. Fraser Island, Sean Whale up the front, jumping whales out there. Mate, I don't eat that bit, I take that bit out. Mate, I take it out but I eat Keep it. Keep it straight in your mouth. Oh, look at this. Now, listen folks, if the location behind us doesn't give anything away, I reckon what we're doing, this is a little tradition that Sean and I made, well, a number of years ago it now. It was. This is what we call the pie burger. <laughs> You've got to do it right though. The key is to obviously put the pie in the, in the bread. I like to go a bit of tomato sauce. Look, yeah, people's awesome. tastes are different, so, yep. you know, whatever floats your boat, put, the, right. put the lid on. And that is a tradition as long as I've been coming here. Where's here, mate? Fraser Island, of course. Where else would it be? Fraser Island. The only place where it starts every trip for the pie burger. Yep, and I've just done the unforgettable. I've put my pie in upside down, champion. Oh, that's <laughs> different. That's different. <laughs> I've got to eat it upside down. Well, this is one of my favourite things to do on Fraser Island, actually. Speaking of favourite things, what we've decided to do for this trip, this is a little bit different. Sean O's going to run the trip for the first half. You've got about a day and a half to prove yep. yourself. Then I'm going to take over and I'm going to run what I consider to be, well, my side of Fraser Island. So you're kicking off right now, mate. Exactly right. And this is, look, this is a good way to start it, in my opinion. I every, reckon. Every Fraser trip that's ever been a success for me has started off with a pie burger. I'm reckon, I'm not often you'll hear me say this, mate, you're one up, mate. Mate, and what's coming next as well is going to blow you away. Really? You already got it sorted? Mm -hmm. Alright, well, I'm going to try and put your head on this. Ooh. You really, curry pie, you got You really taste the curry. <laughs> <laughs> Upside down, pie burger. Old mate Sean O is kicking this one off, and his ultimate aim is to get us up to probably his favourite place in the world, Sandy Cape. And in doing so, he's going to be showing us the more adventurous side of Fraser Island. As for me, well, I'm going to get to show you that West is best. I'm going to try and show you every man's Fraser Island. Just wait till you see the campsite that I've got in mind. You have a go at that view from at the top here. How good is that? Sean O has decided to bring his beast of a 79 series along for this trip. I tell you what, that yeah, thing is definitely coming along now. Hang on, we're going down. There's rocks down here. You've got a big line coming through here. Oh, you're exhausted. Just clear that, then. I'm back in my trusty D-Max, and I tell you what, I wouldn't have it any other way these days. I love this thing. We've also got Mike from Clearview Towing Mirrors along in his weapon of a chopped 200 series. If you're ever after a touring setup, I tell you what, this thing is what you want to see. And of course, my good mate Dion from Scamper Campus in his single cab beast of a 79 series, towing the Dingo Forward Fold Camper. What a fitting name for a trailer on Fraser Island, mate. Good to get around. Oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Yeah, I think we um, wouldn't want to leave another 10 minutes this tide, but uh, I think we're just going to tie these waves and try and just pull over these rocks. You're really rather perched up there. It's all about the time. Time it right, perfect. Uh, gotta wait for that wave, right? Now, this is where Dion has to be very careful. You see, he's got the trailer on, so he has to time these waves on both sides here. Nice one, mate, nice one. You got through salt free. As you head north, you're gonna see an abundance of spots to stop and swim or fish or just put your feet up. One crossing you will hit is Eli Creek, but be warned, this place does get busy and with good reason. So we're gonna bypass this stop today and come back a bit later. Ah, oh, that's nice and fresh and lovely, isn't it? Give a nice wash underneath. Have a go at the people here. Oh, I just don't 
Make sure you check the water here too. You see, you've got to go far enough up the river to miss the salt and just get the creek water runoff, which is about as fresh as you can possibly get. Looking at it today, it's hard to believe that the Mahino was actually built around the 1900s as a luxury passenger ship. After that, it was used during the war years to transport wounded soldiers back from the front. Yeah, when you think about the power of this surf, uh, hammering it all the time, it's amazing that it's still here. Many years later, it was sold to a Japanese company, and it was whilst it was being shipped to Japan that it broke its tow line and washed up on the shores of Fraser Island, where it has stayed ever since. Old mate Sean was towed a boat to the tip of Fraser Island on numerous occasions with varying degrees of success. No, I'm down. I'm down. Mostly the soft sand has caused real issues and on some occasions we've had to have a train of four-wheel drives just to get him going. Actually not too bad at all. I'm just idling up here. I haven't even given it much at all. Oh, this is surprising. For the number of people that are on the island at the moment, I really thought this would be horrible. Yeah, a bit of rain, a little bit of compacting, and you get yourself a highway. Yeah, that's the easiest I've seen it. It's actually remarkably hard to see. Him. I think it's the easiest I've seen Fraser. Part, I think the hardest part we've had so far was the southern section where you just get off the ferry. I've heard a lot of people say Mangala Rocks is uh, worse than ever, so that'll be interesting to see. I'm stoked to have the dingo here on uh, Fraser to do all the R&D testing on it. You could have picked a better name for it. Especially the northern part of Fraser. If you can tow a trailer, I always reckon. You know, sort of past Indian Head and beyond, it's, you want it to be built sort of tough because it's pretty hard to rain. Bring it all on. That's a huge call. It's a big call, but I, I think I'd back you on that. It's certainly up there with one of the best I've ever been. With the sun going down and that tide starting to push in, we had just one more challenge before we could reach Sandy Cape, and that's Nagala Rocks. Hello, boys. This is it, Nagala Rocks. I love this place. Mate, you poke your nose up there first, get around the corner, first couple of corners, and just let me know. That was a small summit. There's a little bit of a watery, muddy thing down here. Let's go slowly through that, of course, and then I'll get into it. The old false summit. It's actually washed out a fair bit since last time I was here. You go through a bit of a trench. All right, now we're really going to get into it. Slow and steady wins the race. Ooh, it's a muddy section through here. That's a bit out of father. When you get through the ditch, the muddy bit, you're going to want to get right on it after that, mate. It's pretty straight, there's no real turns, but um, yeah, if you stop, you're, you're not going to go anywhere, mate. You're going to be, yeah, you all your horsepower. Will do, I don't want to get stuck at this time of night. You get into it, yes! Yeah, old D Max! <laughs> Okay, so that's everyone through except Dion. This is the moment of truth. Come on, mate, let's give this a go. I mean, there's soft stuff up near the top at the moment, and it is soft. You want to use the mumbo up through here, Dion, down that trailer. He goes. Nope, she bogged down, mate. That is very soft. All right, do we come back and get you, mate? If you could. Towing a trail up here is hard, hard work. So I'm just gonna try and turn around. Nah, she's 
he's really stuck. Can't even reverse. thing I want to do is get stuck going backwards, that won't be fun. Sean is reversing back so that he can get into a better position for a snatch recovery. I've spoken too soon, have I? <laughs> ah, there goes Sean O. Toyota life, eh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of lock-up. I'm going to use those max tracks real quick. I'll tell you what, just reversing down here, I got stuck going backwards. So it's nice and soft as you can see. I'm gonna use the Max Trax just to get myself out of here. And um, shouldn't be too hard. I haven't really buried it properly, but it's, yeah, she's pretty stuck still. All right, that worked. I reckon about three more of those. Need to get to that downhill bit and then I should be sweet. Oh, that's so soft. You really can see just how long it's taking Sean to get down there. The sun's set, and I tell you what, being stuck at Nagala Rocks at night is not exactly ideal. I'll use Max Tracks on a stop start as well. So we both jump onto the Max Tracks. Hopefully, we've got some momentum then, and then I can. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> that's, a <plan>. <laughs> that's the plan. I'll come back a bit further because that strap's not going to reach. It's a big no-no, probably the biggest no-no in four-wheel driving is snatch off the tow ball. These things aren't rated, of course. They'll snap. This becomes a deadly projectile. Go through your windscreen. It's not even a laughing matter. There's no jokes. It's just something you just never do. So what I'm going to do here, of course, you can put a hitch in there. But you can also just use the pin. All right, mate, I'm going to go for it. Another bloke on his way back from fishing ran into us and offered another set of ponies to help get him through. All right, ready to go? Yep. Right on. But even that wasn't enough. We had to really put our heads together here. Can we give another red eye go? Sounds All right. good. All right. <laughs> We go a bit further. Oh yeah, you'll be here till 3 a.m. like this. <laughs> After letting tyres no. down left, right and centre, a combination of max tracks and snatch straps, we decided to turn around and try to get out backwards. Just see if we can go backwards yep. and then see how that goes. Yep. If that doesn't work, unhitch the trailer, try and pull it around. Yep. You can drive out, you can come around, yep. hitch up again. Yep. yep. In theory. Yeah, without the trailer it's not too bad. I was able to drive that, as you saw. So I've brought the D-Max around and I've hooked it up to the camper trailer. Yeah, you get it. This sand is soft. Let's give it a go. Let's see. Right up, in reverse. Let's try. All right, I'll just chuck her into dip for drive. First gear, low range. I'm just going to go really gently, mate. We'll just see how it feels, all right? We're sort of making progress there. How are you feeling? You moving? You're moving. Drive with me. No, not a hope in heck, mate. And I think I am well and truly bogged. Just when we were almost out of ideas, we had a glimpse of hope. It's not every day you come across a rugby team <laughs> up in Ngala Rocks at Fraser Island. You know, I'll get in, involved as well, but it, too many blokes make. You know, it's just getting in the way, really, so. <laughs> That's it! Oh, we're committed down here to the bog off. With the D-Max free, and now a daisy chain with Sean and I towing Dion, plus the boys pushing, we got back onto solid ground again, where we can turn the trailer and the 79 around and head to camp. And <laughs> look at them go. 
Rugby team to the rescue once again. Absolute legends, a lot of you. Now, finally we're out. Solid sand from here to camp, and I think we all deserve a well-earned 4X gold. Tonight we've got a sensational campsite, and a sensational place to cook. One of my favourite meals in the whole world, actually. If there's one thing I can cook, it's seafood. And tonight we're cooking up a fish and chips. Good old fashioned special, mate. I am looking forward to it. Actually, no, look, I do have one good tip. The first thing we need is the fish. beer. Yeah, the and beer. then we also need some fish as well. No, good call. Did you say beer? <laughs> no, we definitely do need some fish, though. This is one of the best tasting fish in the ocean, it's coral trout. What I've got in the background, you probably think I've already started, and I sort of have, I've got some potatoes on the simmer, so they're just gonna get nice and soft, and the plan is to cook those in oil, with a few spices, all things nice, and they will get nice and crunchy. Right, so I'm just gonna take the skin off of that. It's quite a big fillet. That's a, that's a nice little fillet there. Hey, you've done that before. What I wanna do with that is just cutting down along the back. We wanna make little pieces. I'm not gonna cook this in big, huge chunks of fish, just small little ones, so that's not enough. I better get some more pieces out. It actually goes a long way, fish. All right, so what do you want done with these potatoes? Put them in here with a bit of oil. Yeah, mate, so get that oil nice and hot first. Yep. Put about an inch of oil. Yep. That's a cool thing, having a pantry when you're out camping. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. That's, that's too much. <laughs> Crack a couple of eggs, yep. bit of salt and pepper. Yep. Maybe a bit of bush spice in there as well. So we're making crumb fish tonight. Now that the way to make good crumb fish, I reckon, is to have a bit of production line going. You want flour, they go in the flour first, into an egg wash, then into what I've got here is panko crumbs. You can use bread crumbs or anything really. And then after that, the secret to it all is to put it back in the Waco for about 15, 20 minutes when it's all crumbed. And that makes it really, really crunchy fish and chips, so. All right, chuck these in the fridge, eh? Yeah, mate. Chuck them in the Waco. They'll be nice and cold in no time. In the meantime, that is nice and hot. Yeah. I'm gonna. You can't get burnt from this, can you? No. Just. just... <laughs> That's not like health and safety, Graham. Yes. That's all working. All right. What do you reckon? That's been about 10 minutes. That oil looks nice and hot too, mate. So just chuck them on, I reckon. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, man. Chuck them in. Drop them in. Look at that, perfect. Well, mate, everything's looking good. I'm cutting some lemons, the final bit. Fish is done, potatoes are done. What do you say? We grab that newspaper off the boys. Yep. And we'll serve mate, it up. They're still reading it. I'll take it off them, they don't need it. Graham, they look at the comics anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. The fish. Grab, grab some fish. We've got a lot of fish, so grab some fish. Grab some chips. Put some in the plate. There we go. There's the first, the first ones up. Who's, who's taking the first one? I've got the first one. Oh, that's right. the first one. No there you go. There you go. Some Fraser. Fried fish and chips. It doesn't get much better, if you ask me. Coral trout on the beach in a camper trailer in one of the best places in this planet. Fraser Island, I'm gonna get into it. Absolutely. How'd we go, boys? Really good. Oh, yeah. That is uh, one of the best fish that I've ever eaten. I've, yeah. I actually haven't eaten coral trout before. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, the best trout. Oh, the bone. <laughs> Best time of the day if you ask me, the sun's just come up. It's up here you have pretty much got it to yourself apart from a few other intrepid others, like-minded souls. First thing in the morning just to watch that offshore breeze on the ocean. No trucks around. A few whales just off in the distance over there. Really is the reason why I head bush. This, right now, is one of the reasons why I own the four wheel drive. All right, Gala Rocks take two. I'm gonna idle up this one, mate. I'm gonna say idle, I mean red line in third gear. I'll give you a bit of room, mate, so I've got enough. I wanna give you just enough room so that I've got that snatch strap just right position. Oh, 
I'm into it. Not too bad this morning. Look, those tire pressure's a bit lower than yesterday. It's just making light work of this. Now we're all up without a problem this time, and Dion has opted to leave the trailer at camp for this morning. Probably a smart move if you ask me, mate. Go, this little fella, little dingo, and they reckon that the dingoes here on Fraser Island are one of the last remaining strands of purebred dingo. You see, they're on the island, there's no other dogs on here, no dogs have been allowed in here for forever. So, there's a pure strain of dingo, they're absolutely beautiful. You shouldn't feed them, you shouldn't really do much with them. So, just leave them be, they leave you be. That's why it's always a good, good idea when you're camping up at Fraser as well to lock all your food away. Like, I lock it away, it goes to the truck. Inside the tent, they'll, they'll get to any sort of food that's available. Good looking dog. All right, we're gonna get to the tip. Here it is, boys. The one and only Sandy Cape. You can see the colour of the water change. As you get closer, can't you? It becomes more clear. There's a lot more clarity in it. Yeah, it's an awesome place. You just enter another world when you turn this corner. It's a wiener up here, either. No, zero wiener. Yeah, look at this. This is one of my favourite places in Australia. You know what I love? Oh, we're just about losing it. I love that tree on the sand dune directly in front of us. <laughs> yeah, the one tree still. So many memories here, it's just, I love coming back every single time. If you get a boat up here as well, well, you'll blow your mind. Right at the top here of uh, Sandy Cape, where all that sand dune is, it used to be rainforest essentially, and they um, logs it all, and that's why there's um, big sand dunes here now. But underneath all this sand, there's um, every now and again like a bit of vehicle or an old bit of um, logging um, memorabilia sort of starts to show itself. Changes every time we come here though, doesn't it? This sand dune's actually gotten quite small. It used to be a lot bigger. I thought I'd take you guys up to the Sandy Cape Lighthouse. For those that haven't been up here before, it's definitely worth a little visit to appreciate the, the Cape and all its glory. Uh, footwear advised. Uh, you got heels on? <laughs> yeah. Amazing place. It's one of my favourite places in Australia and it's pretty easy to see why. Imagine living up here. The things you'd see, it uh, blows my mind. Me hooked up to a big fish right down there. Sandy Cape is a beautiful spot to camp, but the whole west coast of Fraser is a lot like this. It's all calm and beautiful and yep. beachfront camping. Yep. We, we, we are, right there. I'm thinking of taking you over there. Really? On my expedition, which I'm hoping we won't be spending all night digging vehicles out of bottles. <laughs> uh, we'd probably sit on a beach, maybe watch the sun go down. Where's the fun in that? Have a cold beverage, I'm just saying. <laughs> the people will vote. <laughs> people will vote, they will. All right, well. No, mate, I'm glad you took me up here. I've not been up here before. That's a good spot. Great view. That light has an absolute cracker. I reckon we walk the 1.2 k's back down. Okay, mate. Done? Let's go. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Whilst we're up at Sandy Cape, Sean Oates just would not leave without wetting a line. This time, he reckons he's oh. going to nail a shark. See, there's a lot of big sharks that swim all up and down these beaches. Now, completely legal, we're doing, we're going to catch a shark. We're going to release it, that's why we're using a circle hook. Yep. It usually hooks them right in the side of the mouth if we do to catch one. And Graham's going to just get in there, just, just play that hook straight out straight of the mouth. Straight out of his mouth, mate. I'll be right. I'll stand on the beach. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. So the first thing to this, of course, is you can't cast out a game reel. No. It doesn't work. No, I tried. So it's, 
it's not quite casty, you know. We've got to get that into the ocean. And to do that, we're going to use the camera crew and our drone. <laughs> Stand by. This will either work or it won't. Find a good purpose for the drone. Here we go. I really hope that management never finds out that we used our expensive filming drone to tow half a mullet out to sea in order for Shawno to catch a shark. However, you've got to admit it is a darn effective way to get a bait well out into the ocean. <laughs> <Not released. laughs> yeah. And the proof is in the pudding. Oh, the That's right. We had an absolute blast, and Sean O did manage to do what he said he was going to do and land a good sized shark. 60 kilos, probably. Heck of a lot of fun. And do you think we enjoyed it? Well, he's a cute little critter, he? The shark, not Sean. <laughs> Just have a look at us. That is as much fun as you can have. There we go, we're going to release him. Just swim in a little bit, get a bit of oxygen through the gills. He'll swim off nice and healthy, that, that hook. We'll rust out in about a week. We're good to go. And yes, we did release that shark unharmed back into the ocean. And I reckon in five minutes time he'll think to himself, I just met a whale. But not the type of whale I'm used to meeting. <laughs> good fun. Good fun all around. After all that excitement, it's time to head back south. And that means going directly through Nagala Rocks again. But we're old hands at this now, and you guarantee yourself we're not getting stuck this time. That's not too bad at all. Let me go on that. Nagala Rocks, pick up the other side. Mike's up, and even though his 200 is four and a half tonne, he still has that V8 and it gets up without a drama. And of course, Dion brings up the rear in the 79. I tell you what, I will never get sick of the sound of that truck. <laughs> nice work, mate. Now, just before I take the reins and take over this trip, we've pulled in for a bit of lunch. And Dion's managed to get the kitchen out of the dingo before I could even get out of the D-Max. We're going to make wraps for lunch today, and what a cracking spot to stop, eh? Alrighty, that was Sean O's version of Fraser Island. Absolute cracker it is too. Who doesn't love Sandy Cape? But let's be honest, it's a long way to the top up there, and there's a couple of very gnarly sections, and it's not for everyone. And that's where I come in. I've decided to show you every man's view of Fraser Island. What I'm hoping to do is really give you a couple of secret spots or out of the way spots that'll get you out of the crowds, yet let you see all of the island or all the main parts of the island that you'd expect from Fraser. I don't know about you blokes, but Fraser is really famous for its inland lakes. So uh, I thought I'd take us to one today, just to start the day, that you don't really see on the maps, you don't really hear about. Sounds good. So this is Ocean Lake, and it's actually one of the lesser known lakes on the island. It's still beautiful, but it doesn't attract the crowds that Lake Mackenzie does. And that, for me, is what makes it so special. It's kind of, I guess, what Fraser Island would have been like 30 years ago. Hasn't got a huge parking area, so you don't want to come down with too many. In fact, our convoy will probably be about the right number. But it's got a lot of freshwater fish in it. It's got turtles in it. You can swim. It's a gorgeous little area, but you're not going to get those hundreds of crowds that you get when the tour buses come into Lake Mackenzie. You'll almost never get Lake Mackenzie to yourself. You might fluke it, but you might not. Ocean Lake, do yourself a favour. Get on down and check it out. <laughs> How good is this? I reckon half of New South Wales and three quarters of Queensland are on Fraser Island at the moment, but I reckon 95% of the people here wouldn't even know this lake exists. Now, is there a good about, reason there's, for no, it? No, there's not a good reason for it. There's about a dozen kids here having a swim. It's absolutely beautiful. Ocean Lake, if you get a chance, especially if you're camping north of Orchid Beach, this is only a hop, skip and a jump away from any camp you're at, come down here, fresh water, have a swim. Ocean Lake, seriously, give it a crack, guys, when you get up here. For now, though, I'm going to gather the boys up and get them off that rope swing, and we're going to head south from here, and then inland on one of my favourite, no, it is my favourite drive on Fraser Island. Take you there now. I 
don't think there'd be too many other places in the world where you can drive across a sand island through lush, dense rainforest. I don't know, it just makes, I don't know, for me anyway, a bit of a plant nerd, but it makes Fraser just one of those really unique locations. Yeah, it does just change train so rapidly. You've got you know, dry sort of sterile forest and then straight into rainforest and then you're on the beach all of a sudden. You seen how tall some of these trees are? I know, it's just unbelievable to think that they can grow on a sand island. It's pretty cool, we're just driving along here and I had to jump out and just share something with you because within a radius of, I don't know, maybe five metres, I've just seen everything that the native people that used to live out here, the Aborigines, would need in order to start a fire out here pretty much anywhere. It's just more convenient than going to a shop if you ask me. That there would be the spindle to start a fire. As you can imagine, you've all seen it being done. That's the spindle that starts the fire. See these bigger, bigger spikes, like that one down there? That actually became the baseboard for the fire. So that would go into it, they'd put their foot on the baseboard, and then they'd make that soaring motion that would create the friction that would create a spark or an ember. And then, directly behind my cameraman here is a banksia tree. Why is that important? Well, these old banksia leaves, there's two things they'd use these for. First and foremost, you get that red stuff out of the middle. We used to call it itching powder because when we were kids, we used to put it down each other's shorts and it makes you itch, it's horrible stuff. But that there actually catches the spark. And then by slowly blowing on that, blowing on it, that would become a bigger and bigger ember. And then they would simply place that bigger ember directly into the banksia, close it up, move it around, get some airflow through it, blow on it, that catches on fire. You put that into your twigs and there you go. So within about a five meter radius, right here, you've got everything the Aboriginals would have ever needed to light fire. Very, very cool. Let's keep going. All right, you can see the ocean. That means one thing, you can't go any further. <laughs> the other thing means that this is where we're gonna camp for the night, lads. It's a heck of a nice campsite. And I have a feeling you'll think that it beats Shono's campsite hand down. this for a campsite boys you have to agree this is the best campsite you've ever seen eh? not bad mate it's okay it's pretty good you can't get much better than this this campsite is called Worrelly Creek and put that in your memory banks because it's just off the main exit from the inland track the boys got straight into setting up camp and I'll tell you what <laughs> I think I've nailed it for this campsite not quite five o'clock yet, but I'm set up. It's five o'clock somewhere. I'm gonna go and crack a beer. I've always said, west is best. And I'll tell you what, looking at this campsite in this location right now, how could you not agree with me? With the sun down, Shauno, being Shauno, just couldn't resist soaking Three, one last bait. Two, one. Look at the rod on this bloke. And yeah, he came up trumps. We really had high hopes for this being a monster shark. However, as things stretched on and the battle became longer and longer, it really was obvious that this wasn't a shark, but instead was an absolutely beautiful stingray. That's a big stingray. Who's going to de-hook this one or Graham is? We're going to let him go. That fought hard. I never want to do that again. <laughs> I'm going to stick to four wheel driving, I reckon. <laughs> we managed to get it into the beach, we got the hook out with a little bit of trouble, and then we sent it on its way. That is a sublimely beautiful creature, and one that I was very, very glad to see released unharmed back into the ocean. You're good, bud. The early bird gets the worm. Oh, or gets the bacon, bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs, in this case. <laughs> I don't know where um, Dion is, but there you go, Dabble. Here he is. All right, well, if a bloke comes out of there, we... Hey. Oh, yes, Dion. <laughs> yes, they're a noisy bunch. We are, mate, we are, sorry. What are we cooking? Oh, nothing fancy, mate. Bacon and eggs, you keen for that? Bacon yeah. and eggs. 
We'll get this into us to get on the road today. I reckon we finish this track off yep. today, back down to the beach. Back down to Eli, I reckon. Oh yeah. Because that's always worth a look. How long would you recommend for Fraser for someone? At least a week. A week you'd see everything for sure and allow you to sit. And a couple of days of just doing this. Just doing yeah. chilling. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. It'd be great. For sure. Yeah, I reckon. Well, while you get, continue on with that, I'm just gonna go for a quick fish before what? we pack up. We're gonna have a quick fish. Well I'm gonna join right. Dion. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Just follow us over. After a quick, but let me tell you, a hearty breakfast on the dingo camper, we were all hands on deck with getting packed away. A bit of a bummer. This is Coomble Point we're on right now. We haven't got far to go to pick up the track that we're going to take inland from Moons. But this is a bit of a showstopper. If this was fresh, boom, boom, down there. Bah. Ah, you, actually, it is quite uh -oh. sinky in there. I'm it on is. the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to touch this with a 40. I wouldn't touch this with your truck, mate. And that's saying something. Yeah. The Toyota. Toyotas, well, they're a dime a dozen, but I'm not going to attempt it. This is as salty as the sea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not as salty as the sea, but she's definitely salty. Yeah. So. That's a bummer. That's right, but it's worth it. It was, it was a good, good run. Good drive. Run down yeah. the coast. We're going to head back up again, take the inland track back across to the eastern beach. After being here, I reckon that eastern beach is going to be a real shock to the system. Yeah. Wom, 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 I'm, in, wom, I'm in Fraser wom. life right now. I'm all nice and relaxed. And... This is the Fraser I love. But we've got to get across the other side, boys. Yeah, there's some good stuff on the other side. Sure is. Let's yep. do it. One last long lingering look. Ooh, was that a hermit crab? Oh, I was about to get. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the oceans around Fraser Island are absolutely alive with creatures. You've got humpback whales, dolphins, dugons, sea turtles, you've got great white sharks, bull sharks, tiger sharks, and of course a whole host of bread and butter species when it comes to fish. Believe it or not, there is around 18 species of snakes on Fraser Island, with about a third of those being venomous, including the eastern brown snake. You really do have to think to yourself, how on earth did they get over there? Hmm... That, that is spectacular. That's the knife blade sand blow down there. I'm gonna get a quick photo now. You all know me as a photographer. I've got something I need to get off my chest. I reckon 60 to 70% of all the photos I take in a year, every single photo I take in a year, if you added them all up, would be taken on my phone. And I think for some of you watching out there, that number would probably be closer to 100%. The old camera in the phone has become every man's method of taking a photo. And with things improving and technology is getting better and better, it does make sense because some of the photos coming out of here are fantastic. But there are some tips that I can give you when you're using your phone as a camera. And this pretty much goes across all the different types of phones that are out there these days. They all work much the same. So first and foremost, of course, I think framing is everything. A lot of phones will have the camera function that you can put the grid lines on that makes it look like you're playing noughts and crosses. I recommend you putting that across the screen because it'll help you frame things up. So when you're framing it up, try to have the landscape with the horizon in one of the two thirds rather than in the middle of the frame. It just makes it look a lot neater. In this case, I want to really try and accentuate that blue sky. Another really cool tip is that you can get the focal point and also the exposure point on your camera in your phone by tapping on there where you want it to expose for. So you can make it lighter and darker, of course, by exposing in different areas. And it'll also give you the focus in that area as well. Another really good tip. If you hold an area, push and hold, you'll get autofocus and auto exposure lock. If you then move your finger up and down on the screen, you can make it lighter and darker, depending on how you want the mood to look. For me, I really want it to look nice and sunny, as it is today. So I'm just gonna move that up and make it as light as possible. I'm now just gonna tap away and take that photo. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty darn good. But if you have a look on the app store, however it is you get apps on your phone, there's so many different little apps that allow you to tweak that photo 
and use it. In this day and age, that photo that I just took of the knife blade sand blow can be put anywhere. For example, right now, I've got a bar of reception, believe it or not, I could now upload that to my Instagram account and I could share that with the world. I think that that is just so important because what is the point of a photo if nobody else sees it? Photographs are there to be shared. So get out, I wholly recommend that you get to know the camera function on your phone and go absolutely nuts and then use those photos, share them, chuck them up everywhere and invite me to come and have a look because I love looking at your photos. As you know, it's Graham's day at the moment and um, it's going pretty good, like everyone's having a good time, um, especially Graham, he's you're gloating in the fact that his day is going a lot better than my day was on Fraser Island. Um, we've got something to sort of shut him up, if you know what I mean. A little practical joke. I bought some fuel the other day and there was these things, they're called a fart bomb. Apparently they stink a lot and I would hate for one to go off in his car, I'd really hate that, but um, who knows what's going to happen, who knows. <laughs> Where you guys? It's a good day to be a Toyota driver, it really is. Oh. Like a, it's like a juicy stuff. Oh, we, should, we should wash that out before we drive. Oh, I'll get to the beach and I'll wash it. That's horrid. Oh, I guess, now, as I mentioned earlier, Eli Creek is one of the busiest places on Fraser Island, but it's still a great spot to have a bit of fun, cool off and enjoy the freshwater creek. Even though it's what I consider an absolute circus today, school holidays of course, that you do owe it to yourself to come in and check out Eli Creek because it's one of those absolute cracking spots on Fraser Island that you can't really miss out on. So, yeah, I know it sucks today, but uh, we're going to pretty good today. It is. Well, still looks pretty good. <laughs> Certain things do, yeah. Let's jump in. <laughs> Let's go have a look ourselves. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Get it in there. <laughs> Alright, well there you go. Another stop along my guide to Fraser Island. The next one though is what I consider probably be the most famous part of Fraser Island. Not that bloke. Righto, the last stop on my guide to every man's Fraser Island. And that's Lake Wobby. You see, Lake Wobby is slowly disappearing. The Hammerstone sand blow, which is the dune behind it, is slowly moving into the lake, and one day the whole lot will just disappear. Alrighty, well, what do you reckon, eh? Lake Wobby. I bet all of you thought I meant Lake Mackenzie. Nah. Lake Mackenzie is absolutely spectacular, but the thing is, we've even heard reports that there's traffic jams getting in there, no parking, and about a billion people. Have a look at Lake Wobby. There's two people up there, there's a bus there, they're about to leave. When they go, whole place is ours. School holidays, Fraser Island. You've got to walk in, but I tell you what, Lake Wobby is absolutely worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got business to take care of. Hey. There are so many hidden gems on Fraser Island, and the real trick is to try and get off the beaten track and do your research. Go where the crowds don't. And that way, I guarantee you, you're going to be rewarded. I truly believe that Fraser Island is one of the greatest places in Australia that you can possibly undertake a four-wheel drive adventure. From the rainforests, the inland lakes, to the exposed eastern beaches, across to those protected calm waters on the western shores, and right the way up to Sandy Cape, Fraser Island has got to be on your bucket list. Choose your times carefully, do your research, and really get across and enjoy what is one of Australia's greatest treasures. Well, there you go, Fraser Island. Two separate flavours. You've got Shawnos, a little bit more extreme, taking us all the way up to Sandy Cape. 
We got there. We <laughs> got there in the end. That's we all that mattered. We had end. a lot of fun along the way too. It really was fun. Then of course, I decided just to go for that more every man's flavour of Fraser Island, taking you down here to finish up with Lake Wobby, which is, I don't know, I reckon it's a fitting spot to finish up with Fraser Island. Well, I really liked your one, mate, because anyone can do it. You don't need a big nah. four-wheel drive or any, nah. you just need a four-wheel drive, really. Yep. yep. I'm, I don't know, I don't know which one I'd pick, to be honest with you. So I'm going to ask you folks in the audience, which one would you rather do? Shauno's version, or would you rather just have a bit of a relaxing trip and do my version? And tell you what, in order to encourage you to let me know, we're going to give away, what about one of those new thumpers? What are they called? The Thumper Max. Thumper Max. That thing is absolutely incredible. We'll give away. A thumper max to the best answer, I reckon. How do they answer it? On Facebook? Yeah, jump on Facebook. We'll put a little link up there. We'll go on Facebook. Tell us which one, Sean's or mine? Fraser Island. Definitely Sean's. For now, though, how about we just say this? Fraser Island 1. Get over here and check it out, because this is one of the best holiday destinations to own a four-wheel drive in the country. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold you up there, mate. I here reckon he goes. the Happy Valley Pub's going to win. It actually is tonight. You're exactly right. There's <laughs> not, there's not a word going. of a lie there. Happy Valley Pub. See you guys next time on... Four-wheel drive action. Yeah. Catch you around. I like that pub anyway. Dude.